Hey guys, now we're going to go find our operating system. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to distrowatch.com, D-I-S-T-R-O-W-A-T-C-H.com. This is the best website for finding your Linux or Unix distribution. So we're going to go up to the top here where it says search, and we're going to type in ARM. ARM is the processor that Raspberry Pi uses, and we're going to need to search for only the ARM based download so we don't have to sift through a lot of unrelated stuff. So we see the most popular distributions that are for ARM processors and we're going to go down and use the original Raspberry Pi OS. It's actually previously called Raspbian so you may see ra a lot of stuff about Raspbian out there. So we'll go down and scroll down to the latest download, check the date carefully, and we're going to go over to the image. Now once we've found that, we're going to download the download called raspbian-stretch.zip. We're going to right click, we're going to copy that link, and we're going to open a terminal. We're going to use the wget command, and then we're going to paste that link. And then we just hit enter, and it's going to download that for us. This is going to take a few minutes. Our download looks like it's finished. Let's check. Okay, there it is right there. So next let's pull up and get our micro SD card situated. Let us check what's on it. Okay, make sure you go to the top and select the right piece of hardware. You don't want to have your hard drive get formatted here. So we're looking now at the micro SD card and what we want to do here is we're going to right click, we're going to go to format, and we're going to go to FAT32. Now the reason next, the reason we have to do this is because the BIOS will not work with any other format, so we definitely need to do this. And let's apply that right now. We go to edit apply, and once we hit apply, it's going to format it for us. Everything looks to be set up correctly, so let's get out of Gparted, and let's go ahead and unzip the uh, the image itself. So next we're going to use the unzip command. We're going to use unzip and then we're going to type in the beginning. And then here's a little trick with Linux. You start to type something out. If you hit tab, it auto completes it for you. So you don't have to type the whole thing out. So it is now unzipping everything for us, getting the image out. And what we're going to do then is we're going to burn that image to our micro SD card. While it's doing that, let's talk about what you're going to need. You're going to need the Raspberry Pi itself. Here's a Raspberry Pi 4. And what you're going to need next is you're going to need a USB-C power cable. You're going to need a Bluetooth keyboard. This is going to allow you to hook your Raspberry Pi up to your television set. And once you plug that little USB thing into your Raspberry Pi, it automatically will detect the keyboard and allow you to enter commands and log in. And of course, we need the micro SD card. Now we're looking at the image itself, the name of that. Okay, we can see the device name. I just hit D message command, and that allows me to check what the device is called. So we're going to type DD if equals, and then the image itself, and then of equals, and then slash DV slash MMC BLK zero, and it's going to burn that image to our micro SD card. That's going to take a few minutes. We just finished burning our micro SD card and now what we're going to do is take a look at all our files and get it prepared to insert in our Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to need to do is create a file for a Wi-Fi network. We're going to change directories into the directory with our boot directory on the micro SD card. So now we're in the micro SD card boot directory. We're going to create a file for Wi Fi. WPA 
line supplicant dot conf and then in that file we're going to insert our own Wi-Fi network so all we have to do here is insert the SSID of our Wi-Fi network let's say it's called home 42 and then we go down to the PSK and we insert our password in the quotes once we've done that we can save that file we can exit and at that point we can create a SSH file we will touch SSH and what this does is it creates the SSH it enables SSH for remote logins so once we've done that we will then unmount and we have unmounted it we can take our SD card out of the computer and we can then insert it into the Raspberry Pi okay once we've inserted our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi we can then turn on the Raspberry Pi and log in remotely this is known as a headless setup so what we're gonna do is we inserted the Raspberry Pi micro SD card now we hit the power button or plugged in our adapter and now we're going to SSH login for the first time to our new Raspberry Pi. So the default login is Pi at whichever IP address it happens to be. So the default password is going to be Raspberry. Okay, so you've logged in for the first time, and we will get to the next video, and I hope you like this one. So if you like the video, please like it, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with how you can protect your privacy and cybersecurity.